Hey guys, welcome to the show. Uh, today on the show, I've actually got Corbett Barr. Uh, Corbett's, uh, you know, formerly of a blog called Think Traffic, uh, which is now called the Spark Line, and he also runs a membership site called Fizzle. Um, he's recently launched a podcast within the past year uh, that he collaborates with with a few other entrepreneurs. Um, welcome to the show, Corbett. Hey, John. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, no problem. So do you want to share your story, you know, talk a little bit about, um, you know, how you got into this whole online marketing thing and just in general with blogging? Definitely, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to. Um, I have been an entrepreneur for about eight and a half years now. And um, the first venture that I uh, built was actually sort of a traditional, if you will, uh, if I can do air quotes or something, traditional startup, meaning that I built a prototype and shopped it around to venture capitalists and then raised a bunch of money and built an office and, and did that whole sort of thing. And um, this was in 2006, 2007, 2008 timeframe. And if you recall, the um, financial world collapsed in 2008 and um, it was difficult to raise money and left me with a lot of questions about the future and what I was going to do next. And to be honest, I had jumped from a uh, traditional sort of corporate career. Uh, I was a Fortune 500 consultant and traveled around the country and, and helped people with big problems that um, involved technology and that I didn't necessarily care about and didn't necessarily enjoy. And so I jumped into entrepreneurship because I thought it would be a way to really enjoy what I did for a living and to get more control over my life. But because of the way that I built that first company, I ended up feeling in some ways like I had less control than I did when I was an employee. Because now I had a board of advisors, investors, a co-founder, a bunch of employees, a physical office to worry about. And um, I ended up working a whole lot of hours and had a whole lot of stress and worry about the future. And so when that opportunity came around in 2008 to reconsider things, I decided to actually leave that startup behind and uh, my wife and I decided to take off on a six month sabbatical road trip through Mexico, basically just to reevaluate our lives. I was, uh, I guess, about 32 at the time. Uh, I wanted to sort of reevaluate my life and um, hit the reset button. And instead of just jumping into another opportunity that I hadn't thought much about, I wanted to really um, ask myself what I wanted from my career and from my life and how I wanted the two to integrate with each other. Right, so this really was kind of a, a starting point. You just went through and decided that you wanted to really pursue pursue an online uh, an online venture with blogging. Yeah, so while we were on the trip, I guess at first I thought initially that I might uh, just start another startup, but this time try to be a little bit more careful about how I built it and um, probably raise venture capital and that whole thing. But while we were down here in Mexico, um, I actually started um, noticing something really interesting, and that is that we were meeting a lot of people who weren't wealthy or retired, but somehow had figured out ways to spend months every year in a foreign country. And this really kind of rocked my foundation because these people had careers that either they were able to bring th with them or that they could leave behind and put on hold for a little while um, or that they could uh, you know, transition and um, do something different for a little while, while while they were down here. And up until then, I guess my view of the world was that either you were trying to climb some sort of corporate ladder as fast as you could so that you could hopefully retire while you still had some good years in front of you, um, or that you were an entrepreneur and the kind of entrepreneur specifically that slept under your desk and poured every ounce of your soul into your company trying to hit a home run so that you could make a bunch of money and then go do what you wanted with the rest of your life. And these people were sort of proving me wrong. They were doing something that was kind of in between. They were doing a, a third sort of thing. They had figured out ways to make their careers work around their lives instead of the other way around. And so while we were on that trip, that sabbatical, I decided after a couple of months to start a blog. And I did that because I wanted to chronicle our trip and talk about the travels we were doing. I wanted to tell the stories 
of these interesting people that we were meeting and I wanted to sort of start asking myself that question that I mentioned earlier out loud which is what did I want from my work and my life and how did I want the two to integrate and so I started a blog in March of 2009 which is just about five years ago coming up on the anniversary here and um, that blog proved to be very popular actually during 2009 if you recall because of the way the financial world collapsed there were a lot of people out of jobs and a lot of people with a lot of questions about what they wanted to do next and so there was a lot of interest in concepts like lifestyle design location independence um, and becoming a digital nomad those sorts of things so I was really exploring all those topics for myself as well as my audience and by the end of the first year of blogging over a half million people had visited my site Wow. Now, was that the Think Traffic Net blog, or was that a different blog? No, so that was a different blog. Um, that was called Free Pursuits, and that ended up uh, becoming my personal blog after a while. And now, um, you can actually find most of the archives of that are still intact um, because I've made several transitions in terms of the brand or the specific site that I've been operating under. Right, right. Now, did you eventually just come upon the idea of Think Traffic after starting that original blog there? Well, what I noticed was that uh, I had a whole lot of blogger friends who had interesting ideas but really were having a uh, hard time figuring out how to grow an audience. And at the same time, I was uh, blogging about lifestyle design and location independence, some interesting things, and I had a following for my blog but I also didn't exactly know how I was going to turn that into an income. So I realized that blogging was very powerful, but I also realized that I needed to come up with something that I was going to offer that was tangible and specific to a specific group of people so that I could create products and services for sale. And um, because of the experience that I had at the startup that I built, um, we actually had grown that to over a million registered users, as well as the uh, blog that I had been writing, I started to know a thing or two about how to grow an audience online and so I started the blog Think Traffic um, as a way to build an audience that was looking for something specific so that I could create products and services and um, that was in early 2010. Okay yeah so it really it sounded like from all your experiences you were just able to then go back go out and create that blog and then start share, you know creating those products and obviously now you've got your membership site with Fizzle and you've expanded quite a bit. Yeah, definitely. And and that's just been kind of my uh, you know, method of operation is to uh, work on something, figure it out for myself and then teach other people and um, you know, eventually create products and services and courses and things like that. Yeah, awesome. Now, I wanted to ask um in terms of like growth and just going through all these, you know, obviously starting this personal blog, doing think traffic and you know now you've got um, you know the fizzle course. Uh, what are some of like the real struggles you've had and, and failures, things that you've really you know maybe struggled with throughout the journey of uh, entrepreneurship? Well, in the first year, like I mentioned, I mean the biggest struggle was really figuring out how to turn the audience into an income. And I knew that I wanted to so support myself online. I knew that uh, blogging should be at the center of that. I just didn't know exactly what to create who to sell it to and there were a lot of questions there and I uh, doubted myself a lot and so I ended up spending a lot of time working through that and, and it took me about nine months or so how to figure out um, how to earn any sort of revenue at all and then it took me another um, six to nine months after that to really start supporting myself online so that was the biggest struggle and uh, the breakthrough for me there was figuring out that I needed to offer something tangible and uh, different and to try to solve a problem for people as opposed to just talking about you know interesting things and the way things could be. Right, right. Yeah, I know I've looked at, uh, I guess particularly for me, I've been through, um, I did sign up for the trial um, back earlier this year for a fizzle and I went through it you know for 30 days and I was able to look through quite a bit of the content and you know you guys are really kind of standing out I feel like in this space because I've been through a lot of different courses and um, you know you guys are definitely doing great things with that course. Thank you. I appreciate it. And it's, you know, it's because 
I've been at this uh, entrepreneurship thing for eight years or so, and um, blogging specifically for five years. And you know, the the first things that that I put out um, in terms of content and videos and things like that were definitely not so polished. It's just a, a process of learning and getting better each time. And um, Fizzle at this point, I, I feel like is really great. Um, and uh, you know, I'm I'm lucky and fortunate to be working with a couple of guys that are really talented as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was something else I wanted to ask. You know, I, you know, I feel like it's not quite as common. You know, a lot of people sort of do these, maybe I'd call it more of a joint venture where they work together in webinars or product launches, things like that out in the space. But you've actually got a team of, you know, it's you and it's Caleb and uh, Chase. You guys are basically working together in this, and it looks like you're kind of now the, the – uh, you're all bound together in this whole project. Like, how did that really come about? Was it? You, have you been friends with these guys for some time? Or yeah, it was kind of organic, I guess. Um, in uh, I think it was 2011 or so. I was looking for some help with a lot of the things that I was working on because it was just sort of growing beyond what I could handle myself. And I actually uh, published on the blog a an opportunity for someone to join me to help out and Caleb was one of those people who had applied and he had been reading my site for a long time and he had actually taken one of my courses called Traffic School. So Caleb joined me um, and quickly became my right hand man and um, then in late 2012 I was at uh, New Media Expo in Los Angeles and uh, was lucky enough to meet Chase Reeves and he actually became a, a close personal friend pretty quickly and then we started working together. He's a designer by trade and he actually redesigned Think Traffic at the time and uh, then when our idea for Fizzle started taking shape uh, between Caleb and I we decided to bring Chase into the mix as well and so we all essentially co-founded Fizzle together. Uh, we were there, the three of us from the beginning and this team is really working out well so we just decided to go all in together on everything and, and now we're just basically partnering on everything that we do. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know you, I've listened to a couple episodes of your new podcast and that seems to be doing really well. I, I was looking at the reviews. You guys got almost 200 reviews. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, um, it is amazing because honestly, we try to just have fun with it ourselves. Um, maybe too much fun sometimes, but uh, it seems like people are loving it. So we're happy. It's, it's really a win-win. Yeah, awesome. So I know um I, I know we we're, we're uh, you know we're kind of limited for time but uh for the time we have left I did want, want to kind of dive into um the topic of traffic that was kind of my my thought for this actual interview. Yep. Um, you know with all your years experience you know I've gone through I remember when I went through Fizzle um I watched some of the the videos that were regarding traffic generation but um I I guess I wanted to know you know what's what's working for you today and what uh you know what have you been doing to drive traffic to your blog and um, potentially the podcast as well as your membership site. Yeah, and you know the situation uh, for us now after this five years of evolution is a little bit different for people that are just starting out. So I'll try to keep that in mind. I mean, for us now, you know, the biggest thing uh, in our history that has led to growing an audience and and maintaining an audience of decent size. I mean, I think we have a couple hundred thousand people that come by our sites every month. Um, you know, now looking back on it, the most important thing has been to consistently publish articles on a blog that people find useful. And I know it sounds simple or whatever, but over the course of five years, we've published six or seven hundred articles. And those articles eventually just, you know, gather some steam and people link to them, people share them, people talk about them, the search engines pick them up. And so now, you know, it's not uncommon for us to have uh, six or eight or 10,000 people come by our site in a day. And that's simply because of the volume of work that we've published over time. And, um, you know, we get a lot of search traffic and a lot of referral traffic just because we've been around uh, fighting the good fight for so long. So that's kind of the macro picture, I'd yeah. say. And, and um, you know, for people listening to this, I know it can be frustrating when you're in the first month or two or even the first six months and you're putting stuff out and it seems like you're not getting any traction. And, you know, there's a, a process that you have to go through 
to find your voice and to figure out what you're actually saying and what you sound like and who you are and who you're serving and what problems you're solving. And that's a, that's a long, painful process for some people. But once you do find your voice and you figure out who you're talking to and what you're trying to help them with and the best way for you to come across in a really compelling way, then you start to get traction. And you'll notice that traction because people will start to share your articles. They'll start to comment on them. And, um, and from that point forward, once you figure out what that secret sauce is for you, then it's simply a matter of continuing to do that same thing over and over again. And of course, you know, we can talk about tactics and I'm happy to, and that's usually what people are interested in. Like, you know, what can I do tomorrow to get more people to my site? But it's just a good idea to kind of keep an idea in your head about what that big picture is and what you're working towards. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, um, so in terms of like tactics, I know you guys over at Fizzle are pretty um, pretty big on like um, doing these challenges and things like that. Um, you know, is there anything you might recommend or, or tactics like you said, maybe something I could go do tomorrow that's gonna make you know make results or start generating results for me to start bringing more visitors to my website? Yeah, well, the first thing always has to be to focus on building an email list, and the reason is that you know, social media and RSS and all these other things are um, are fun, um, but you're gonna put all this work into creating content. I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like the the most effective traffic strategy is always content marketing. That means putting out information that is free and accessible to people online that is very useful to them related to the topic that you ultimately intend to create a product or service on. So. We're talking about content marketing by default, and that's why we blog, and that's why we create a podcast, because it's a way to get people's attention, and then hopefully to turn those people into customers. So um, once you consider that content marketing is important, the next thing that you need to realize is that you're going to put all of this work into content marketing, into getting your stuff out there. But all that work can be done in vain, because someone will come to your site, and then they might click on a link or something and leave and then never remember you again and never come back. And that's going to happen no matter what. However, if you focus on building an email list, that gives you a way to connect with people on an ongoing basis. And that's very important because these relationships that we're trying to create and the trust that we're trying to build, that takes time for each customer. You're not going to sell people necessarily on the first time that they come to your site. In fact, people join things that I've created now and they tell me that they've been aware of me for four years. And, you know, luckily I've been able to cultivate that relationship and the best way that I know to cultivate that relationship is through building an email list. So, um, tactically speaking, you mentioned earlier that we do things like challenges, for example. We have this thing running right now called the 30-day Just Ship It Challenge, which is yep. the goal of which is to um, get people to actually publish something and get it out there in terms of a product or service in a very tight time frame, 30 days, which makes a lot of people uncomfortable, but it's a great thing to actually get something published and um, out there and for sale because it's so easy to spend six months and never get anything out there. Um, but the purpose of the 30-day Just Ship It Challenge is to get people to um, engage with us and to sign up for an email series where they can see the kind of material and the kinds of value that we can bring to them on a regular basis because they sign up for a 30-day challenge and they get 11 emails from us over the course of those 30 days. Um, so they really get a feel for what it is that we offer. And that can be a great sort of thing to put up on your website to continually drive interest. You want to... Um, create things that people want that they're willing to give you their email address for and a challenge is just one example of that you could do a free video series you could do a uh, toolbox of sorts where you put some you know maybe a little uh, guide or a video or something related to again the central topic that your blog is about and the problems that you want to help your audience solve yeah, that's awesome advice, and I know um, I've set up all those things with my blog, and I know that that's you know very common in this space is to you know set up some sort of uh, incentive for people to sign up, and then you can you have a lot more control with the email list, and that's an easy way to keep in touch with people. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Now, in terms of, uh, I guess, more tactics, so, you know, beyond um, email lists and you know obviously content marketing, I know um, guest blogging is pretty popular. 
Um, you know, what are some other things that you might recommend in terms of, uh, you know, bringing out, you know, getting more of an audience to your site? I mean, the biggest thing for me, aside from, you know, content marketing and, and the email list that we've talked about, the next biggest thing has really been the relationships that I've created. Um, you know, I'm, I am able to be mentioned on some really big sites online, um, and, uh, and it happens all the time without me doing a whole lot to cause that to happen other than what I normally do in terms of putting content out there and that is simply because I have um, become friends with people who have big sites online um, and those people didn't necessarily have big sites when we became friends. A lot of us started out at similar times. Um, people like Adam Baker who runs Man vs. Debt or um, Scott Dinsmore who runs Live Your Legend or Pat Flynn with Smart Passive Income or yep. Leo Babauta with Zen Habits. I've known a lot of these people uh, for pretty close to five years since I started and at the time none of them were necessarily big names but uh, you know this is something that people need to pay attention to. Whatever space you're in there are rising stars out there. There are people who are going to be big. Some of them will be overnight successes. For example, uh, someone that you know, John from John Lee DeMoss from Entrepreneur on Fire. I mean, he came out of yep. what seemed like nowhere just a year ago, and now he has the biggest business podcast on the planet, it seems like. Yeah. So w your job is to figure out who those people are that seem to have that magic spark the people that really seem like rising stars even if they don't have big sites already and start to form relationships with them start to form mastermind groups with them become friends with them and support each other along the way and then you'll grow together and you'll mutually want to help each other because you always want to help your friends out when your friend launches something you want to tell people about it not necessarily because you have some sort of complicated joint venture agreement together but just because it's your friend and you want to promote them and I benefited big time from that um, and when a launch comes up I'm able to lean on those friends and ask them for for support um, so that's really huge and I think that when people think about getting guest posting opportunities or getting featured on someone's podcast it's really hard to understand how am I going to make that happen but it's much easier if you start to think of it in terms of a lot of those opportunities come about because you're able to make friends yeah I think that's awesome and uh, you know it's funny you mentioned John because I interviewed him Saturday and um, I've been helping him he has a membership site I've actually been I did two free videos it took me about an hour and a half today just to make these free videos for John but um, I really stood out to him uh, you know just as an example and I could probably ask him for a favor now and he would be glad to return it and someone of his nature you know with what he's been doing online it's it's really kind of you know I'm standing out to him and I, I think it is super powerful um, I actually thought the whole idea of these relationship building, you know, the, the idea of it in general was so great that um, I actually recently wrote a Kindle book on it. It's about 25,000 words. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll share a free copy with you when it's released. It's pretty much done. I just need formatting. But um, I, I think it's great you mentioned that because it's been working for me, and that was one of the reasons I started interviewing people, and I found that to be very powerful. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's great that you sort of found that naturally. And I think it's something that people overlook. Um, I think it's also something that people can make relationships into this uh, thing where they're really concerned about what someone is going to do for them before they actually establish the relationship and you know those kinds of people when they approach you and it's rare that those kinds of people are actually going to make meaningful relationships and it's kind of interesting because it's you know, uh, you know against everything that they're trying to do. So I always try to focus on the relationship first, the person, get to know the person, care about them, offer everything I can to help them, and if something comes out of it, great. But really, um, you know, to me, life is about having great friends, and, and so I like to extend that into my, my online world as well. Um, the other thing is that, of course, all of this, the content that we've talked about, the building the email list, the making relationships, all of that is predicated on the idea that you have something of substance to begin with, something that is worthwhile to share with other people, something that you need to say that other people aren't necessarily saying, problems that you're trying to solve, people that you're trying to help. All of that has to be intact before these strategies of putting content out there, building an email list, building relationships, before those things are going to work. So that's really the fundamental thing and, and you just need to be asking yourself, you know, when someone stops by my site, why should they care? 
why are they going to spend any time on my site versus all of the hundreds or thousands of other sites that are out there on similar topics? What do I have to say that is unique and compelling enough to keep people around? And that's really the framework and the you know the foundation of all this other stuff that we've been talking about. Right. I know it's it's kind of a traffic in general as a topic is a little difficult because there's so many other things that kind of intertwine with it. You know, when you look at building an email list or you know getting conversions and getting leads and things like that. Um, actually getting people to sign up for that mailing list and you know doing other tactics that go along with it such as creating the content and creating great content at that I know you're a big fan of the um, you know the kind of the epic uh, epic shit is what you what you call it I think right yep yeah yeah and <laughs> yeah and and you know I mean I I ran a popular site probably the most popular site on the web uh, about building audiences about um, growing traffic purely for uh, over three years and we kept asking that question like why are some sites massively popular while most of them you know the hundreds of millions of other sites that are out there go basically unnoticed and you know we started focusing on traffic to begin with and what it takes to grow an audience but as we evolved and as we kept asking that question um, it really came down to this idea that traffic alone is fairly worthless you know and most of us have stories about either ourselves or people we know who have done something that you know got featured on Lifehacker or some other really big site and they got this wave of traffic uh, for a while you know maybe tens or hundreds of thousands of people came by their site and at the end of it they really didn't have a whole lot to show for it because again traffic is so subjective it you know it depends on who's coming to your site how much they know about you how much they care about the thing that you're talking about and then what mechanisms you have in place for capturing that attention turning them into long-term relationships it's just there's so much else that goes into it that to be honest in the end we got sort of tired of talking about traffic tactics because that's not really where the substance is. The substance for me is in creating influence among people that matter, both the people that are potentially going to become your customers and the other voices that exist within the topic that you're talking about that have influence over those people. Um, creating that level of influence where people know and like and trust your what you have to say um, that's really what the name of the game is at the end of the day for me. Yeah, I think that's awesome advice, and I mean that's really what I've been trying to do. I know it's so funny, but um, you know Derek Halpern sent out something a few months back where he he wrote an article about just sending simple emails, and like people have forgotten about how powerful such a simple tactic can be, and that's what I've been doing. You know, whenever I launch anything, like if I put out a, um, you know, I recently put out my first course on Udemy about podcasting. And yep. um, I literally sent out an email to like 20 people that I knew listened to my show or they were past guests from my show and I was able to get about 15 reviews and I now have more reviews than any podcast um, course on all of Udemy and I have more members because I used an incentive free coupon and went on a forum and got some real buzz going so um, just the combination of things I've been able to do it just makes it look, you know, the social proof is there and I've got these people to back me, you know, because I've been building relationships with them. And isn't it great when you don't have to worry about conversions and traffic and a bunch of tactics and stuff because that stuff is just draining and it really takes you away from the the things that matter in your business which is you know figuring out a crew of people that you care about who have issues that are trying to learn things and trying to do things themselves and um, serving those people and coming up with the answers for them and just being valuable to those people that's really what business is about it's not about the conversions and the tactics and the strategies and all that kind of stuff yeah 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 no I think that's it's definitely great advice and you know I'm, I'm kind of right there with that because I've been like I said I've been working on this Kindle book and it's basically all about the same topic and how I've been reaching out to these people so it's it's definitely been a journey you know because I've been doing this about two years so I still have a ways to go to be where you're at obviously you, you have some really great things happening and all the, the following that you have is massive um, you know but uh, yeah that, that's um, I think for now I know um, I know we were limited for time uh, did you still have a few more minutes or sure yeah um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I, I know I had a I had a pretty long list of different things to bring up, but um, I think we've kind of covered it on more of like a mass scale. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at some of my notes. Anything that might come up that I feel like would be good. 
in terms of like I know we brought up challenges, you know, is there something, you know, maybe um, like you said, maybe tomorrow someone could go look at a resource or something that that might really help them kind of get get started in the right direction. I mean, I know for Fizzle they could get in for a dollar and start going through your course, and I, I would recommend it to anyone listening. But um, anything in particular, specific in terms of really building their audience, they could go do tomorrow that might really help them get get going. Yeah, I mean, we we as I said have been publishing for five years. We have hundreds of articles, and several of them that have become really standout articles. And these are just freely available um, at our blog, which is called the Spark Line. That's at fizzle.co/sparkline, and we have um, archives there. People can look through. Um, there are several posts in there that are really action-oriented um, that will walk people through the things that you can do to build an audience specifically or to build a blog audience. That's a great place to start, and I can send you some links, John, if you want to include yeah, them in show notes or something. That would be really helpful, you know, so, something that the audience could really go look at and, um, you know, kind of take what, you know, take action on, on a piece of content. I think that would really be great. Yep, yep, absolutely. I, I'm happy to send those to you. And then, of course, like you mentioned, um, Fizzle is our training library and community of online business builders. These are all entrepreneurs who subscribe to this idea that I've been talking about, which is that business is really about solving real problems for real people, and it's not about the track, the tactics and the, the loopholes and the black hat stuff. Um, these are people that are trying to build real, meaningful things. Um, and Fizzle is not just a course, it's a, a set of courses. We actually have um, over 60 or 70 hours worth of video courses in there, uh, not just taught by us, but also taught by people like Scott Dinsmore of Live Your Legend, Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income, Leo Babauta from Zen Habits, um, and a whole lot more. And you can actually try it out for a dollar for the first month and if Fizzle is right for you, if you uh, connect with our mission and what everyone is doing in there, um, then you can stick around if, if you like. And uh, we have over 1,200 members now, um, wow. And, wow. It's, and it's growing every month. So I'd love people to check that out as well. Yeah, and I know you recently added your um, Build a Blog That Matters course to Fizzle as well. Yep. Yep, exactly. We've we poured everything that we have ever published, basically all the useful stuff into there, and uh, we have a lot more coming this year. Awesome. All right. Well, I uh, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I I want to. I know we've been about a half hour here, so I figure we could uh, wrap things up. But uh, yeah, really appreciate great. you. Yeah, taking the time to uh, you know talk with me today and uh, share your story about how you got started. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, John, and uh, and good luck with everything. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. It sounds like it's working. Yeah, yeah. All in, uh, all with consistency, like you said. Yep. Talk to you later. Okay. Cheers.